Massachusetts, Mr. Delahunt is recognized for five minutes of questioning. Mr. McNulty, let me state for the record that uh, I've always found you an individual of integrity and professionalism. Thank you, sir. And I wish you well in uh, the private sector. Thank you, sir. Having said that, yes. Um, <laughs> let me see if I can bring some clarity to this. Um, you would be unaware of any political or improper political considerations in terms of the development of this list. I think your response to uh, Mr. Keller was that you were totally unaware of that, or of any that might have occurred. I'm the assuming. development of the list of U.S. attorneys. Right. My, my involvement with that began... Uh, my, my point is that you were not really part of that process. That's correct. You were the caboose. Am I correct? I came involved at the end of the at, at the end. Right. I mean, you were left out of that process. I mean, am I making a fair statement? You're making a fair statement, yes. And in terms of... I'm not the, saying it was intentional or not. I just know I was it, not involved. I don't know myself, but I'm just saying. And the gentleman from Georgia indicated that in terms of the delegation uh, uh, order, um, you were unaware until about a month ago, or maybe six weeks ago, uh, of the existence of, of that order. I, I don't have any recollection of that matter coming to my That's, attention before that. Uh, I mean, and you referenced the fact that you read that uh, somewhere that uh, it was an admonishment not to uh, involve the Office of the Deputy Attorney General uh, in the process itself. Well, it, it was... It was uh, routed around right. our office. Yeah. But it was clear to route around the office of the Deputy Attorney General. That's what the, uh, the, the right. paper indicates. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm drawing an image that you were zoned out of this process. I don't know for what reason, um, but uh, maybe, that's, uh, maybe that's an issue to be pursued by, by the committee. Um, you know, the day after you resigned, the Attorney General had a press conference and he made several observations. The one person that I would care about would be the views of the Deputy Attorney General because the Deputy Attorney General is the direct supervisor of the U.S. attorneys. And yet you weren't part of the process. Well, another time the Attorney General said, I think in his Senate testimony, that he, one of the regrets he had was not directly involving the Deputy Attorney General in the process. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I mean, uh, Mr. Sampson might say that, you know, he talked to me about U.S. attorneys over the course of my time that year I served as deputy, and we talked. But you were not involved in the I wasn't aware of a specific process of identifying U.S. attorneys. I mean, did Attorney General Gonzalez call you in and say, Paul, we've got a list of eight United States attorneys. Um, what's your opinion? I mean, I would think this is a matter of significant consequence to the administration of justice as far as the department itself was concerned. Did you talk to him about this? Not before the phone calls were made on December 7th. That's not how that process worked. It was more indirect. Well, I guess what I'm saying is I'm not – I just find that remarkable. Let me make sure that – very clear. I was in a meeting with the Attorney General on November 27th, so I did have that – interaction. Uh, what was that meeting about? Was it about the list? It was about the plan of going uh, of... Uh, was that your first communication with, that was directly first with the Attorney direct, General? That was my first direct... How long did that How long did that conversation My last? best memory is it was... Well, it wasn't a conversation between us. It was a meeting involving several people. I don't remember the Attorney General so much of the meeting. I don't recall even much that I said. So it was like a meeting with him personally. Uh, and the meeting lasted approximately half an hour. Okay. The first time, November 27th, for a half hour on a key decision in terms of the functioning of the Department of Justice. He went on to say, this is the Attorney General, he signed off on the names and he would know better than anyone else, anyone in this room, any, uh, anyone. Again, the Deputy Attorney General would know best about the qualifications and experiences of the United States Attorney Committee, and he signed off on the names. I dare say, understanding the realities of what occurs here in Washington, you were the caboose, you were given the list, and the, 
maybe it was never articulated, but the suggestion was sign off, we're moving. Well, I, and to be fair, I was given an opportunity to voice any objections I had, and I voiced some objections. And, uh, and were, also, your, were your objections respected? Um, yes, uh, the, uh, at least one name was taken off the list on, on my objection. I raised some questions about another and did not, at the end of the day, voice that objection so that it wasn't removed. And, and to be fair to uh, the Attorney General, I think he would say he was relying on Kyle Sampson to get my input, and that's why we didn't have direct communication. Well, the time I, of the gentleman has expired. Would the gentleman like an additional minute? Well, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll close. I'll take the additional minute. Why not? Is there any objection? You know, let, let, me, let me just say this, Mr. McNulty, and I say this respectfully to you. I think you were, I think you were poorly treated. Uh, I don't think that the process was done in a way that reflected well in terms of the professionalism uh, that I know exists in the Department of Justice. Uh, it's my belief that you were thrown under the bus. And with that, I'll yield back.